uh, is this my name is uh, Pamil Mandiratta and uh, I am actually the founder of Yoyo Leads and prior to this I have done multiple businesses I had been a serial entrepreneur and uh, currently holding on to a, a you know position in a you know very good company go for technologies private limited as a senior subject matter expert and uh, my role in the company is to actually you know create new verticals for for the new you know for the company as uh, you know we are expanding and uh, we just uh, you know took a break while there was covid and uh, we just you know did not want to burn ourselves so we strategize everything and uh, we kind of planned everything which actually meant to you know surpass the existing cycle whatever the existing cycle that we see that uh, you know the collapse the tech bubble you you may see that there are so many startups burning their hands and uh, you know it it was definitely important that uh, you know every startup does understand that they have to get into the revenues and unless they have a good revenue model which is reliable they they can't they can't really you know get into a good shape eventually some other whale might come and their competitors you know probably would be waiting for them and uh, the competitors try and you know get them sorted like you know i've seen it with a lot of startups what happened in the past any which way so you know talking about the company the you know the, it was actually taken over by by you know me and uh, you know my wife is the managing director in the company uber technologies private limited and uh, we we turned out to be you know i mean it's, it's it's an amazing journey so far we tried a lot of things and uh, you know it wasn't that a very easy and very comforts journey because we took over this company uh, during covid and uh, we strategize everything we we just didn't want to burn ourselves so we just kind of waited and waited and watched the market plan everything plan every move whatever move we would be taking up and uh, we actually created the whole road map to be honest you know creating a road map for any business is important and doing the competitors research is definitely a key aspect and uh, that's what we did throughout the you know covid tenure i would call it and then we struggled with the team as well you know we hired people and then you know it, could, it didn't work out the way we wanted so there were a lot of instances that we faced uh, initially but then yeah you know it just kind of you know it is a process you know you're running a startup and it is a part of the process where you have to really be on your toes all the time and you know come out of your comfort zone you might have seen all these codes but we really believe and we really have seen it we have really have you know experienced those kind of things that uh, you know that are not easy to handle such kind of situations where we were probably thinking is it seriously going to work out and uh, eventually now things are really in shape and uh, we are very fortunate to have a great team and uh, we started up with our you know the, the very first vertical which is yo yo leads and uh, it's doing pretty good so far okay so what's your future plan with this company i mean the yo yo leads uh so the brand yo yo leads is actually you know it was curated for a very subjective reason and a very calculated uh, you know measure that we had taken up because see we see the real estate market is is actually struggling a lot the real estate market why they are struggling is because the you know portals the real estate portals to be honest they are they are, they became the unicorn company you know they have become huge already you may call any any name you know and you would see that yeah the tech uh, you know real estate tech industry uh, is is huge already i mean they have made millions and billions of dollar valuations already but then when you see the market and when you see the you know uh, realistic figures the brokers the consultants 
they're they're you know they're struggling even now with those kind of tech projects being there they are still struggling because of the policies you know because we could see that there is definitely a requirement in and there is a loophole in the system with the you know the, the quality of the leads that those people get the consultants and these agents and these brokers whatever you may call them and you know they struggle a lot with the quality of the lead the leads are shared amongst multiple people and you know the price manipulation is there and uh, you know the competition which is there that actually kills the deal in fact you know that real estate is a little you know unorganized sector you probably have heard this or you know might have experienced it yourself that it is kind of a very unorganized sector right or maybe a little but then uh, you know we are just trying to fit it to the space and we want to make it more professional with the kind of approach that we have so we have built the software the crm you know our smart bot chat you know chat smart chat bots they are also playing a crucial role and uh, you know they are very effective to to actually you know make the clients their bro you know, the brokers are our clients and when i'm talking about the clients of them they are the leads right so the clients that they have they would uh, probably well, you know they would probably get more connected when you know somebody who is very professional will try and approach them in a professional when i say professional being professional does make uh, you know when you when you mail someone you know you you call yourself a professional when you send them a you know proper uh, minutes of the meeting or if if they if the client had a site visit probably so when somebody had a site visit and they probably have seen that yeah the property looks fine the price is a concern or whatever 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 so you know in 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 a professional world like we talk about we come from a tech background now somebody you know in our company what we had done the uber technologies i'm talking about so when we have a client meeting we send them a minutes of meeting right similarly when somebody has visited a site in the real estate or whatever for whatever project if he had been approached by a good company or a good uh, you know broker or channel partner of the builder and if they are approaching the client and following it up with a very professional way he would be very comfortable he would feel that yeah he had been you know taken care of he, and he he will feel comfort you know he will definitely feel comfort with the broker channel or the you know i mean the consultant that yeah this this consultant is really professional has a very good difference what other you know what he might have never experienced before so that kind of experience is uh, what what we are trying to bring in with the with the process of yo yo leads so not just the leads leads is our expertise we will definitely be working on uh, getting the best quality leads and uh, the future that we are creating right now is to 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 maximize the revenues for these real estate consultants unlike what they really you know experienced with the real estate portals or even if they tried their hands in you know or tried or i would call it burned rather that they burned their hands with digital marketing processes the market and you know the the digital marketing processes you know also gets changed with trends you might have also seen it the you know sms campaigns used to work like back then now it's not working anymore even email marketing has a very you know it's it's really at the verge of negligence you know nobody really bothers about what emails are they getting right so eventually you know what the trends are even the digital marketing uh, you know trends have changed over the last like 5 7 10 years and every 6 months you see there are changes the new trends are coming you know new things are coming in tech and you want to try all of those things now we are having a virtual meeting at zoom so you want to try that as well you know as a tool and it goes it got so famous that everybody really knows about it so that's been the change and adopting the change for a real estate consultant or agent and broker or builder whatever that that itself is a challenge and they don't know how to really catch up onto that pace of you know maybe you know catching up the trends in digital marketing if they would do it then probably 
you know they won't be able to i mean close deals they they can focus on one thing so we take care of the back end process completely entirely like partnering with them that's how we work so we provide end to end services to the builders and good channel partners and it's very exclusive and we choose our customers to be honest customers don't choose us we choose the customers when when i say that i really mean it because that's how we create a better pipeline for our business we check out their portfolio we check out what they're doing we just don't hover around in the market and you know tie up with random brokers or random consultants so they have to be registered you know with rera and whatever and uh, they 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 should be professional they should have a license and whatever so that's what we all keep a check on those people and uh, that's how we are building up and scaling up so at the beginning how did you you know convince the broker the builders you know about your idea how did you pitch them uh so we talk about the problem you know how how would you you know get to have somebody to understand your entire process is by actually talking about the real challenges that they might be facing so you know as as and when you talk about uh, you know the process and you you talk about the current market challenges or you know when you when and they already experienced it to be honest the conversion rate when they get a lead from the real estate portals or even if they've tried some digital marketing processes they burned their hands multiple times and uh, eventually never got good results so you know we just talk about those things that you know you guys are not experienced and uh, we have our speciality in real estate so when we have our you know expertise in real estate so that does make a good impact you know we have picked up a good niche so you know a niche that is definitely definitely a very unorganized sector uh, and also i would call it uh, like you know people people do have uh, the you know spending power that's also what we check when we actually entered into the real estate segment and we created this vertical called uh, yo yo leads so yeah that's what we made sure that uh, you know everybody actually gets it that the problems are there and we are here to fix them and you know without even having you know them to work on them so it's like we are doing all the back end work and uh, making sure that they are being served well okay audience any question anyone you to yourself मार्केट है Vishal, we had ex, you know, we had tried different things with the the hiring process. We tried, uh, you know, LinkedIn. We tried posting on different, uh, you know, social media groups, and uh, we also tried our hack with some HR consultants, but nothing really, you know, kind of worked out. Reason is probably you know the expectations of the market are already very high. you know the people in you know that that are maybe you know that might got laid off from edutech market or you know there are so many companies that has fired a lot of employees now they were actually hired on a very high package earlier getting me and the, that being a challenge where they were hired on a very you know small profile i would call it you know i mean like a key account manager or maybe a business development executive role right and they those companies which were funded the vc funded companies they actually paid them like you know like 7 8 lakh rupees a month or i mean uh, an annually 7 8 lakh cpc annually which a startup cannot afford to be honest right so finding a right candidate became a very big challenge who could actually understand the mindset 
and who could actually you know get to the level of commitment the problem being that you know the stability is not there even after getting like 7 8 lakh rupees package the you know the employees in the market you know they're just trying different things you know they just just want to you know get out to a better salary package so if they get like you know right now you're getting 7 and 8 you probably would get 9 you would sw switch you won't bother because there was, there were so many options getting me when you talk about like last few years there were so many options no, so many new startups coming in so many different opportunities were there now even today i think you know the opportunities are still there for the right candidates which really makes sense to for the market to understand that yes you have to really perform here now companies are not going to pay hefty salaries just in case you know even i mean you know earlier they were just not uh, comfortable of firing people because they had their brand image as well you know they can't really fire people but now since everybody is doing it nobody is bothering nobody is really taking you know i mean just imagine you work with uh, a company and uh, probably you know you, the the only company in the industry is firing people so that you know that brand image might get diluted but that is not a concern anymore to these startups right so now things are getting better in shape and uh, I mean, the employees are also trying to understand that they need to have skills, not just, uh, you know, I mean, a brand won't help them. Eventually, they were just doing some minor tasks. It, it was not that, you know, that they had so huge skill, they were getting like 9, 10 lakh of these package. It wasn't the case. So just giving, just giving you kind of an example, Vishal, where I had personally experienced these kind of challenges that you know hiring and then uh, when people were not really moving and not really you know kind of uh, getting the results even if it was a back end or the front end job doesn't really matter but then end of end, end of the day you you would need results right you would need the deadlines to be met and that's where we found a lot of challenges and uh, virtually things were not really that great as well i would definitely mention that Virtually managing a team virtually wasn't that easy. We actually tried a lot of tools. I mean, Trello and you, you see Slack and then, you know, Google Workplace and all of those different tools we tried. And it was like, you know, people were not aware. The employees were not really that aware about using how to use those skills and who use those, I mean, tools. So, we just kind of tried and tested, tried and tested a lot of different things and uh, nothing could really work out that well for us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we actually found better ways to manage finally. And now we are, we are still virtual. We're still re working remote. Our teams are working remote. And uh, now they're, you know, they had been given good trainings on the tools, the, the tools that we are currently using. And, uh, you know, things are really getting better in shape, like I said. But challenges were there, yes. <laughs> this is, you know, there's two parts of it. One is the hiring part, and then the second part is the retaining part. Oh, my God. So, you know, <laughs> after a few months, a lot of people might say, you know, I am doing so much this, that. Can yeah. I get a raise? How do you handle situations like this? Uh, so, with, you know, giving them ESOPs, we try and giving them ESOPs. And uh, we actually, you know, gave them better perks and the flexibility to work from home. And uh, I mean, a lot of different uh, type of things that we offered them. So my team currently, you know, I mean, people from Chennai, Mumbai, you, you know, we have people from Delhi, Chandigarh, and a few more places as well. So we're, we're fine. I mean, you know, we have majority of them are from Delhi and Sia, but then um, we have people from all over India. Okay, that's good. Over to you, Arithra. Okay, anyone else? Any question from the audience? Okay, so, sir, uh, I would like to ask you, you know, what are some of the qualities that a person required to have in order to be an entrepreneur? Oh, so... 
or maybe the other way around you can tell that you know if the person has this quality he should never pursue entrepreneurship <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we can go other way around as well. So I, Aritra, see the qualities. I think time management the, is the foremost key to success. You know, you may call commitment, dedication, all of that. You know, and I see those those is just words to be honest. When somebody you know manages his time well and he understands the value of time. even after working like 24/7 you know it it would really you know you i i don't get tired you know i can i'm i'm like a working machine you know you see people working but i work like 60 hours straight i don't mind you know when when it, when time comes i just don't sleep at all no neither a nap so i had like uh, you know st- stay awake and r- always on the screen i'm not even talking about like okay maine maine game khela maine ye kiya maine wo no 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 i'm talking about straight on the screen and i spent like 60 70 hours at times and there were multiple instances that i had faced these kind of situation where things were really really you know on top priority and we had the deadline and we could not really you know cope up with the situation so i had to and it it was not a tiring job you know because i was inspired to do it now other thing is you you definitely need the time management skills if you have good time management skills you can be an entrepreneur i'm i'm being very blunt very straight forward here anybody can be an entrepreneur it's not that big deal even if you don't have communication skills you can do some other things probably you can hire someone for the communication skills doesn't really make a difference you know if someone is like feeling uh, you know he has some disability if he has any kind of disability he can he can do he can still do well i have seen people you might have seen people you might have seen lot of different stories you know on linkedin or facebook or reels you see a lot of reels right so you probably have seen it that you know what kind of people are those that have faced these kind of challenges in their real life and still managed to become an entrepreneur out of nowhere so i have seen it i'm that's why i'm being very blunt so the language does not matter the communication skills does not matter what really matters is that you are inspired to do that particular work whatever you know idea or probably you know a problem that you're trying to resolve so if you really have that you know instinct that yes this product is best and my product is really good and you have to really understand that you know when you have a feeling about something the other people outside also should feel the same or even if like 60 70% people will feel the same that means yes your product has a market fit and then i have no doubt anybody can be a business man so as you say that you can work 60 70 hours straight without any days so is it because of that inspiration only Oh uh, yes yeah it does uh, it it does really help to be honest aritra if i did not really have the inspiration to you know i mean not everybody can do that and i wouldn't even recommend that to people that you know just try 60 70 hours straight or straight working and no breaks at all don't have food don't have water whatever i don't i won't do that i i would not prefer myself doing that again but it when time comes and you don't feel tired you know when you have inspiration behind it you know that this is your role you have to get this done and you probably are you know you probably feel that yes this is something which is needed and then i don't think that anybody can fail you could do that yourself you would definitely need a back end support and you would definitely need uh, you know i mean it's not just about the 60 70 hours of straight working you could take other examples as well you need to have an inspiration behind whatever you're doing if you don't have that like why i am into the leads business you should ask me i would tell you that okay why i am into the leads business all right listen people are struggling i myself have faced a lot of challenges while 
you know building up the pipeline like you know what 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 can i do with the funnels i mean i may have a brilliant idea i may have a brilliant project what do i do when i don't have a good funnel and with the current market trends not everybody has the capacity or the capability to you know create funnels or create the pipeline even if they have so many influencers teaching them or trainers online trainers mentors i mean just imagine how many courses you might have done yourself you know during the covid break and i have seen lot of people you know they have tried and you know tried and tested different kind of uh, online programs themselves but what happened nothing people are lazy people procrastinate everybody does everybody wants a lazy time i know and i myself play games at time you know whenever i feel you know okay now i need a break uh, you know and at times when i feel it i try and play games that's my way of uh, you know like that's my way of taking out me time i would call it because i want a peace of mind and uh, then i don't want anybody to be around me i keep thinking my thought process is still going on ideas popping up and you know what what my to do list is and what i i'm going to be taking new action in the business all that is coming up on the top but i'm i'm playing games just to relax just to calm myself down i hope you get my point yes yes so there are a lot of inspirations that you can probably have and uh, we we have one of them i mean the problem we ex- actually know what the problems are and uh, we are trying and helping people we are supporting the people that are really struggling so before starting this business did you, you know work somewhere else in a in a private sector company or in real estate sector okay so yeah, good question i was i had consulted more than 1000 plus startups arindra you had i had i mean i had consulted and uh, you know done projects of lot of different startups and i would call it like more than 1000 startups if i just talk about the consultations i consulted more than 1000 startups and uh, the journey that i had so far was amazing you know there are a lot of different startups different uh, you know I, and into different segments into different verticals and they came to me for different kind of challenges that they were facing it could be like their project management their business process their back end process or their front end process training their sales team sometimes and then you know having them to have a good growth plan so you know there were a lot of different things and uh, i did work in the and that was all private sector only <laughs> you know i worked as an independent uh, startup consultant and uh, i myself groomed myself meanwhile and i became a blockchain consultant as well i have launched cryptocurrency projects too nfts and daos and you know dapps and different kind of things as well in the last few years and uh, i'm in the industry for last uh, you know third, it's it's my 13th year currently 12 i mean 12 plus and third, you know some like that 12 to 13 years and uh, the journey so far had been fantastic i had faced a lot of i i myself started a lot of startups and uh, failed a lot of times and i i'm now when i do another startup i don't really have any fear a lot of people face fears when they actually plan to you know launch their startup and they feel like you know what if it fails what and i know you know i have particularly faced those kind of challenges that i would not prefer anybody to face but eventually it did really help if now i see that you know the kind of uh, you know personality that we brought you know or maybe the kind of uh, experience that we have now it is really unimaginable if i look back i mean i come from a very small town there might be people from small towns here i came from a very very small town based out of haryana you guys have probably never even heard of that town it's called jean i don't know if you might have heard it you probably have not i know so it's close to uh, rohtak city i i think you probably know rohtak 
there is a city called rohtak in haryana yeah, yeah. i am rohtak is there also yeah right so it's like 60 kilometers from rohtak city and there people don't even speak in english even if somebody would try to speak in english they would just shut them up you know that's how the haryana culture is to be honest back then now probably it have you know it might have changed a bit but still i know the kind of mentality people have here in the small town so you know being from a small town it wasn't that a very pleasant journey i used to like really tremble when i used to speak in english but then over the period of years you know while talking to a lot of different clients in us europe it just you know it just made uh, life better you know with the kind of challenges we faced with the kind of process we built and uh, yeah it was it was i mean i'm still feeling it how and uh, you know it wasn't that really a very pleasing journey we did not have that kind of backup and support and uh, even today you know we're not a funded company i don't want to you know ha- have the funding in place before actually creating this as a revenue you know profit making company i would call it so our aim is to make it a profit making company for ourselves and also to our customers once we have it i would probably go for the funding as well but for now it's 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 just amazing we just love the space that we have created so audience any question anyone can write in the chat box or ask directly okay so sir as you just said that you are now trying to go for funding but the thing is that most of the startups don't get any fund from investor so why do you think it happens what are some of the things that investor looks for in a startup oh good question aritra i would uh, probably you know answer it from two different point of view so on the one side we have the startups right that are looking for funding and on the other side we have the investors that really wants to fund companies understand it you know it's it's a very clear statement that i'm making here like if you have funds if you are not putting it to putting those funds into something you are being you know you are being a victim if you are an investor you will be a victim of inflation you know you and even if you do if you just put up that money into some mutual funds or anything like that you're still losing money because of the inflation rate is very high getting me so as an investor you really want to invest consider it getting my point now when you take it this way that as an investor you would want the best out of your money you would want the best of the roi or best of the returns what else would you expect you have the money you want to put it into something or the other you may try different things so you know generally what happens is that they are actually tired right now if you if you really talk about now the situation that we have currently seen i have been part of those vc meetings and angel investors meeting a lot of times and i have personally seen it that the kind of challenges that they personally face the companies that are coming to them are really not professional they don't have a good uh, revenue models and sustainable revenue models are not there they are trying different things coming back again with a different idea so you know the the background check is also important for uh, for any investor who is if, even if you are an investor consider yourself as an investor why would you invest in me investor why would yeah if you are an, an investor and if i would be pitching you my product or anything like that why would you invest in me because i want my profit that's why you want your profit right okay. but when i specifically talk about why would you invest in me you would particularly check whether do, do i have the skill set and whether do i understand this market better whether i have a keen interest in actually you know creating revenues or just creating numbers you know just like user badhana and 
you know most of the companies did that kind of thing and now we see the you know the valuations are have the valuations of those companies have skyrocketed already but eventually the companies are into big losses that that is really not easy to recover you know the companies have i mean faced uh, the vcs might have faced a lot of challenges now that's the that's the reason why there are mostly you know most of the companies are laying off people they want to come to an idle stage you get my point yes yes so you know as an investor you would have always want your money to be safe you would want your money to give you good return on investment and that phase of checking out and uh, doing the due diligence on the company background check it takes a lot of time and you know the the startups they don't have the patience most of the startup they face this challenge that whatever you just said that uh, you know they just want money you know instantly because they go to the funding stage in in a very late stage when they are about to shut down their business or either they are just like trying getting my point mm. like to, e either they are trying they to, need it uh, desperately yeah e exactly you know when they're doing it something very desperately you won't be able to generate uh, and i mean create a good funnel for your investors if you want good investors you would have to be very sure that yes now is the time so understanding the timelines of you know being a part of a pitch deck or like creating a good pitch deck and presenting it to an investor is also a key role that you know that a startup really needs to understand you can't just go at the you know late stage that oh i am done and i don't have anything left if i won't get it i will just shut it down so that should not be the case nobody is going to you know put in money in a sinking ship getting my point so that is one eventually if you're trying uh, and raising funds from from family and friends and if they are supportive try doing that just to you know make sure that you are stable and you are you know consistently working the way you want and uh, things are progressing even if it is gradually growing that's fine don't worry you know you'll have all the time uh, eventually no company is going to be becoming a unicorn in one day or one year no company has been you know has ever been able to do it getting me so it takes time everybody knows it but you should have the bandwidth to actually maintain that and don't hire too many people hire and fire i don't i you know when you don't when you don't feel comfortable with somebody even if you are attached i think you need to part part your ways with those kind of people that are not performing so eventually you would uh, you know make people understand that yeah you would need to work with the startup startups are not here to just make fun you know you would need to work even extra you would you it's not just a 20 you know it's not just a 10 to 5 or 10 to 6 10 to 7 job it's more than that you know right now we are having you know an interview round so which is actually you know beyond the timelines as in like you know it's 9 9 30 and we have extended the you know session a bit so i would uh, you know i would really regret and apologize for the you know apologize to the audience here that uh, we were not supposed to extend this session but my conversation goes a bit longer than expected no it's okay it's okay yeah thank you so yeah aritra so you know in as an as an entrepreneur as a startup owner you should definitely be very confident about your product and then going to an investor will make sense when you have tested out the product bootstrapped it pretty well and got some numbers so you you would get entertained better i think mm -hmm. okay okay sir so thank you so much for joining so it was a great session. I would wrap up the session now and I would thank send you the recording, the YouTube recording. Thank you. Audience. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Aritra, Vishal and all the audience here. I would really, uh, you know, acknowledge you guys for bringing me here. And, uh, you know, I, I really love the session and love being part of this, uh, you know, community that you are and you're doing a great job, guys. Thank and you. appreciate your, you know, efforts. 
it was a really a, you know it is really a good a good pleasure to you know be part of it and i wish you all the very best to your team and to all the audience who wants to become an entrepreneur and if there is anything that i could do for you guys drop me a message on linkedin or you know i'm more active on linkedin by the way so yeah you could drop me a message there and i would be very prompt and whenever i'm available i would definitely reply back thank you so much take care guys good night bye good night thank you good night